like usually, right? Like when grit marketing gets the name gets thrown around, the number one thing people attach to it is like culture, right? Like yeah. that's like it's usually like what buzzes like with with our name, and people will will sit there and and ask right from the outside looking in, dude, like how do you guys do it, dude? How do you how do you do it? You went from fourteen, and then six of us didn't even knock in twenty twenty three, so we really went from eight returning golden doors to thirty seven. Yeah, just in in from twenty twenty two to twenty twenty three, and. It's like, dude, how are the results? We had, we've had three rookie golden doors over the last two years. Dude, how, how, how? And it's funny, like, do we live and die by the Urban Meyer quote? It's on every one of our little slide decks. It's all over our office. It's, uh, he says, leadership creates culture. Culture drives behavior and behavior produces results, right? Yeah. Leadership is what creates the culture. Culture is what drives the behavior and behavior is what produces the results. Welcome everybody out to the DDD podcast. We got an extra special Golden Door deep dive with one of the OGs of the Golden Door realm. This man has broken records upon records. I, I think of that Kanye West video where it's like, how many more records do you want my records to break? And John Taylor's just screaming at you. <laughs> and yet you keep raising the ceiling. Um, a quick plug too is it's like, you know, summer 2020, like rewind the clock back, your million dollar summer to see how you and Cody broke that four minute mile and how everyone is doing that now. It's pretty rad. It's, it's pretty, pretty awesome. Rad. So without further ado, guys, we got the real Drew Hansen live with us in the studio. So dude, like, thanks for coming up. It, it, it was funny. We got a little like recruiting boot camp here and say, I was just like, yo dude, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got a big org. Like, let's, let's, let's pick your brain. Yeah, no, dude, I, uh, Roz, thanks for having me, man. I'm, I'm stoked. Yeah, I didn't expect to go into that, uh, that little workshop and, and talk for 15 minutes, but hey, it was fun. A little detour to the podcast. Right drop, now. drop some bombs. Had to. Dude, there's some like, you know, blue collar roofing company owners that are just like. <laughs> good guys in there. Good, good guys. Good men. Good yep. men. But their, their jaws definitely dropping though. I love it so much. So, um, dive in head first. Um, you know, Drew, I don't really know. Like I, I definitely know, know of you, know your accomplishments, but I don't really know too much of your background. I want to dive headfirst into that. Like, how did you get involved in door to door? And like, what's what's step one? What's the origin? Yeah, yeah. So I'm from St. George, Utah. I uh, graduated high school in 2015. Went on, an L went on an LDS mission to Southern California. Served in like the East LA Pasadena area. Got back in 2017. Uh, I was going to UVU, detailing cars for my uncles at their car dealership in Linden. Uh, soon realized that working for scrubbing seats for 20 bucks an hour was not the long-term play um hey 20 bucks an hour back in 2017 hey, that's, that's not, not bad not horrible i've definitely heard of worse that's but, like minimum uh, wage these days but it is but yeah broke college kid like all the money come that comes in it goes to tuition rent and you know you're stuck doing homework all night and you, you don't get to experience really the whole life of college and so i uh all my friends sold they were all planning on selling um so I was like, yeah, dude, if I can go out and make 30 grand in the summer and not have to work and go to school next next year, then sign me up for that. I'm I'm all over that idea. So I went out to uh, my best friend through high school. His older brother owned a, uh, a pest control branch in Denver, went out and sold for them my first two summers. I went to Denver my rookie year. It went great, better than I thought it was going to go. This what, 2018? 2018, yeah. Okay. Sold 500 accounts my rookie year. I was like, oh, this is uh, this is chill. Yeah. <laughs> this is, yeah, This is, let's run it back. Uh, so... I went out to Kansas City, opened an office for him the second year, um, and same thing went great. Sold over 570 accounts and made good money. I, uh, at following that summer, I ended up switching to the uh, switching to Green X, and I joined all the guys I work with now. We were uh, a region of Green X. Who recruited you? Jackson Jr. Oh, JJ, yeah, what a yeah, guy! Shout absolutely, out. shout out to the guy. Yeah, my uh, my dad and his mom grew up together in Park City. Oh, nice. Um, and so when he got home from his mission. He ended up coming and meeting. He was meeting around. He went to. He ended up going to Green X. He reached out to me after that that summer in Kansas, and uh, I saw how well his reps were doing, and I saw how well my reps were doing, and there was a pretty big difference there. So I uh, I decided to go take some meetings and, and and meet around, and then I just I I met with the guys at Green X, and I just really felt that what I valued aligned with what those guys valued. Uh, there were better deals elsewhere, but um, yeah, took a bet on those guys, bet on the horses, and. Uh, 20, then that led, it led into the 2020 summer. My plan was to go out and sell a thousand, make that big jump. Uh, Green Inks at the time, they had the most thousand account reps. So I was like, well, if I go work with these guys, I'll uh, hopefully level up also. Um, I got out there and I just started battling. Like I, the, the competition, I had never experienced that before. And so 
I was battling with McKay, with Cody. Where, where were you that year? Indianapolis. That's right. COVID summer. Yeah, I went out. Couldn't go out to like middle of May. Uh, but as soon as I got, I got out there, first week I PR'd. Second week I sold way more than I had ever sold. And then third week I actually broke the company revenue for Green Egg sold in a week. No one knew that at the time. I sold 80. No one knew that because Cody sold 122 that week. <laughs> so <laughs> Damn Cody. So yeah, dude, it just like, it, it got more and more aggressive throughout the summer and it led to me just kind of upping my goals as I was pacing. I, you know, I was like, I got to do 50 a week. And once I did 65 my second week and 80 my third week, I was like, well, let's up the bar. And then, uh, yeah. yeah, it turned into, it turned into 1200 accounts to a mill and then the 1500 accounts. And then, uh, yeah, that, that summer though, it gave me a platform to recruit, ended up swinging over some amazing humans uh that uh that run a big program now and we went out with 70 i went out with 70 guys the next year and that year uh like the golden door in pest at least like it became way more prevalent me and cody dipped with like 30k shy of a double golden door in 2020 because we yeah. just we didn't really talk about it that much and so uh bought into the whole bought into golden door we had 11 golden doors that next year i i did 1.1 that next year and then um they upped the golden door and I uh, went out and did 1.3 the following year, ran, ran a massive team and, and, uh, our guys have crushed since. Yeah. So. Which is, you know, pretty crazy. Cause there are a lot of guys that are like, they're great at selling, yeah. but they're horrible at duplicating. Themselves. Yeah. Rep, rep, replication. It's been, uh, people are like, dude, are you like, are you bummed that like you're not selling or, you know, see your broke your record or what do you think? And it's like, well, that means that we're doing the the right thing. Yeah. Isn't that the point? Yeah. That's exactly the point. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. you'd probably would look back and be like, I did it wrong. If people aren't surpassing me. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. No, I, uh, we don't have any interest in getting to the top and, you know, having the big ego and being the guy for forever. Like we, uh, yeah, like it, re replication is the only thing that's going to make it progress. So. Absolutely. Cause one of the big like words, like, you know, when we were jamming a little bit before the podcast is like what's the biggest thing that we want to talk about on my like impact and Rad. it sounds like that's one of your like big life goals is to have massive impact yeah yeah that's like that's that's how like i think that's how we operate as a company uh you know like when it comes to intention of leadership um i think that that totally matters uh like the purpose of the grit is not to do things for free but it's also not to make money it's not a charity though so like it's got to yeah. make sense but no, like our, our, our mission statement and our purpose always has been and, and always will be to have as much impact as possible on individuals and families that we work with both now and in the future. Yeah. And so that's like the lens that we view everything through, like, you know, what types of partners we want to sell for other like ventures that we get into outside of just our sales program. Um, you know, buying pest control companies, getting into SaaS sales, doing a call center, like all of it is funneled and directed towards having more impact on our people and making the experience better. And so, uh, yeah, I think that's a big reason as to like why we end up getting the results that we do is, is based off like the intention because the intention of leadership definitely matters. Yeah. Because I think a lot of fallacies that we run into is a lot of leaders. What, what's their number one goal? Just money. Yeah. Money or equity or residual, or I want to, you know, build up my pest branches. Uh, it's funny because like you, like usually, right? Like when grit marketing gets, the name gets thrown around, the number one thing people attach to it is like culture, right? Like yeah. that's like, it's usually like what buzzes like with, with our name and people will, will sit there and, and ask, right? From the outside looking in, dude, like, how do you guys do it? Dude, how do you, how do you do it? You went from 14 and then six of us didn't even knock in 2023. So we really went from eight returning golden doors to 37. Yeah. Just in, in from 2022 to 2023. And it's like, dude, how are the results? We had, we've had three rookie golden doors over the last two years, dude, how, how, how? And it's funny, like, do we live and die by the Urban Meyer quote? It's on every one of our little slide decks. It's all over our office. It's, uh, he says, leadership creates culture, culture drives behavior and behavior produces results, right? Yeah. Leadership is what creates the culture. Culture is what drives the behavior and behavior is what produces the results. And so the results are a direct reflection of the leadership. They're a direct reflection of, of the culture. And I think uh, John said it best. I think it was on his Today's Today podcast with, with Zach Anderson, but they were talking about like culture creation and like how you create culture, right? Yeah. And what culture is, dude, is, like culture is whatever the top guys are about, it bleeds down. Whatever the top guys are about, it bleeds down, right? So it's like, well, why why do people look at our Instagram and they're like, why the heck are these guys talking about Harambe and the gorilla and all this <laughs> stuff? It's like, because dude, in 2019, when the grit when the grit was started as as, as just one team in Philly, well, that was a huge narrative back then. And that's what the senior guys have continued to talk about is doing it for, you know, 
the, the gorilla or whatever, or, you know, as dumb as it sounds yeah. or do, why do we have sugar-free Red Bulls stacked in every, in every fridge? Well, because do the senior guys have done that ever since the beginning. And so whatever the top guys are about it, it bleeds down. And so that's where like guys ask, like, how are the results so different? But it's like, it really is a simple answer. Well, dude, the intention is impact. Like that is the intention of our leadership. It's not to, you know, sell these types of accounts or it's not to, you know, again, grow a massive pest control company. It's not to rack up L tip points. It's not to gain equity. It's not to just make racks. It's not to just rock a fat marketing deal and make a rip off of all your reps. Like that is not our, that's not our point. That doesn't lead to impact. And so pouring into our people. And I think Casey, Casey Ba, he, uh, he, he's, he, he says it like, you know, and th this is like what the, the OG OG guys who have done and built it the way that like, we want to replicate and do it like how they did. Well, dude, he talks about how you can't just pay your people physically. Like you can't just pay them with equity. You can't just pay them with a fat deal. You just can't pay them with the sign on bonus. Like you have to pay your, your, you know, the, the, you have to pay your people, you know, in all four pools, right? Like yeah, yeah physically, but also like social, emotionally, spiritually, yeah. right? The whole person, educationally, the whole person paradigm. Uh, and that comes from like straight up pouring into your people. And so if I'm focused on running a branch or handling technicians or recruiting more, you know, keeping my margins low and keeping guys in the dark about how pay works. Well, dude, I can't focus on like pouring into my guys because I have a different agenda. I have different intention. And so it really just boils down to, yeah, whatever the leadership, the intention of the leadership is, then that's what will bleed down and the culture will, will pump out the results. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about like delegation. Yeah. And what kind of what role that plays, because obviously it's like, you know, if you're dealing with technician drawing area, all these different things, uh, you know, and time management too, because if you're feeding into your guys as well as handling all of the like the nuances of the business yeah uh it's gonna get pretty hectic yeah do you mean like just in the summer like uh back in the office or uh, both yeah let's, yeah I think, let's, let's start with the summer i think in the in the in the summer i think something that's been really cool that that uh we've always done and i've tried to like really implement in my teams is um you know i have my like core leaders i have my like we call them like pod leaders and especially like i've always ran big teams you know 40, 50, 60, 70 man, 70 man teams. And so I can't do that like all on my own. Right. And so mm -hmm. when I get out there, yeah, dude, I identify the, the four or five, six most influential leaders on that team who also know that they're leaders. Uh, and those are like the pod leaders. Right. And then I, we assign six to seven guys per pod leader. And like, that's who they're responsible for. Mm -hmm. And I think a really something that's awesome. And, and one of the main reasons why I was tr attracted to working with these guys back in 2019 at Green X was, dude, all of our guys work with everyone's guys. Like mm -hmm. there are no regions, there are no names. Like they're like, it's not like, oh, you were recruited by Zach Kinzel, so I'm not gonna work with you. Like Kinzel is not in my program, but he did a training with two guys that we flew in this week yesterday, right? Yeah. Like, and so that was something that I really, really liked from the very beginning. I, Cause I remember I was going through the recruiting process and I was meeting with guys and I was like, yeah, dude, every region is just so different here. And they're like, oh yeah, we just, we totally do our own thing. We don't, we don't interact. We don't do that. Like we don't do anything together. And I'm like, okay, like that's cool. But like, I don't really like that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that. I like the abundance mentality that I, and like that, that feeling that I felt when I went and met with those guys at Green X. And so in the summer, I still remember in 2020, like I was meeting with my pod leaders and this happens every Sunday night, right? Like we, we, we meet with all the pod leaders. We talk about the team. Let's go through every, every single rep, what they sold that week, you know, how our sold to service was, who was on our, we do like a wounded in action report mm -hmm. for guys that have like a low initial, bad soul to service, um, high three day cancellation rate. And they're on our like, are there like a wounded soldiers? And so we'll go through every single rep. But I remember um, that summer in 2020, it was the first of the summer, one of the pod leaders was like, my guys, my guys. He's like, well, yeah, well, my guys need, and he kept referencing my guys. And I said, okay, hard stop. No one here has guys. Like you don't have recruits. He doesn't have recruits. I don't have recruits. Everyone's guys are everyone's guys and we'll run this like a family and that's how we will treat everyone. Which is such a unique approach. Yeah. Because like my experience in, in the industry is like very much like you're kind of with your people strictly. And it's yeah. like, yeah, maybe like- You're worried about your downline. Yeah, right? maybe another guy in another region, like if he's a top guy, maybe he has time for like a quick lunch. If yeah. You're lucky. Yeah. But half the time he's just gonna text you back and then ghost you. Yeah. Yeah, no, I- uh yeah, that's just how we've always operated in 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 full in just you know as, as abundant as, as we can be because we just believe like all ships rise with the tide yeah right and so i think another just you know 
credit to 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 the guys but like we we've also had like a culture of like being coachable and, and being a sponge and so mm. if those leaders aren't bought into that concept of oh i no longer have recruits on my team and i'm supposed to work with everyone then you're gonna yeah you'll run into roadblocks because they're again they're worried about do my margin my overrides my earnings yeah. like and then that becomes the intention and it's like well why are you not getting the results well <laughs> but your intention isn't isn't as pure as you're saying it is. Yeah, the intention truly is the building block 100. to a good organization. Yeah, intention matters for sure. Intention matters. Intention matters. That's the sound bite. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> hey, we're not. We're not perfect, and we're a lot of things over over at the grit. But no, dude, we we are our word, and like we, we do care. Yeah, we do care. And it's it's actually funny hearing you like you know talk about that because I, I you probably don't remember this, but I remember I met you back in like 2021. Back in the day, I went to. <laughs> The office. I, I don't remember where you guys were at. It was like in Linden or something. It was across from the Vivint. Oh, that was our very first building. The, the yeah, Vizium the very build. first building. Yeah, we shared, was... shared the Vizium building with with uh, the Axiom reps. We had like three little office spaces, one conference room. Yeah, but I remember I had a recruiting meeting with uh, Jackson Gardner and Jackson Jr. Okay. They were trying to br bring me over from Vivint. And I remember, yeah, I like met you in the hallway and you were training with a rookie that wasn't even on your team. Yeah. Like even back then. Yeah. And like, so yeah, yeah no, that's, I totally, that's, I totally that's remember how, that. That's how we've done it from. And from I thought the that was like really cool. I was like, wait, really? Like the top guy in the company is, is just taking time with a rookie that's not even in his downline. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, dude, we, it's just, again, like the, the purpose is way greater. Yeah. Like the purpose, the vision is way greater than, than you find in, in the norm and in door to door. And I think that dude, that's what made vivant what it was back then like Absolutely. you know those guys push each other casey pushed jeff jeff like like they just it, and it goes down the line like yeah they 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 wouldn't have been able to get there with 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 just a few a few of them right like it took all of them to get there absolutely absolutely and like you said like the rising tide raises all the ships totally and having that abundance and again the intention yeah intention matters no it actually does matter <laughs> it's insane and it's cool to see like how that ripple effect is just like blessed so many lives and impacted so many lives. Yeah, no, it really is like the guiding force with everything. Like when we go and sit down with, you know, like I I don't participate in it, but like I, my my business partner, Easton, Easton Bunker does, he'll go with John Taylor. That's usually who goes and meets with most of our operating partners initially. And, and like the number one thing that like we address, right? It's like, okay, cool, does this work? Like does, does us working with you as a human, like do we like you, do you like us? Do we believe in the same things? Okay, cool, let's like press forward. Next is like, okay, selling your services, is that going to create more impact for our people? Is the experience going to be A plus? Is the earnings going to be A plus? And yeah, dude, like if, if it's not, then then like it's a non-starter. Like, because like, again, the intention is, is, is impact. And so if companies don't let us sell, right? It's like, oh yeah, we can provide 6% attrition, but we're only allowed to sell quarterly. Well, if we're selling $650 contract values with even 10% attrition, we're only netting like 580 per deal. Like that limits, that hinders the earnings of the rep, mm. right? Which hinders the impact. And then, and so, yeah, no, it's a non-starter. So we'll literally go and say, Hey, like, this is like what it needs to look like. And, and, and so that we can have the most amount of impact on our, on our people. And, uh, which like that, I think that's why a lot of people end up like really liking and wanting to work with us as far yeah. as our partnerships goes, because they can see that, Oh dude, the, the intention is pure. Absolutely. And it's kind of crazy. Cause it's like, you know, you're, you, you've been giving away the secret the secret sauce. Yeah, we've given a lot of it away. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I, I mean, I, gosh, it's it's basically just, you know, you want to recruit big, retain big. Yeah, you want to retain big, you create experiences and you create earnings for your guys. If you if you dial in those things, you're there for the long haul. Oh yeah, dude. Like it just it because I've been there, right? Like, and it, it's horrible to like see kids that are in this. They they're going through this recruiting process, or they've worked at a company for multiple years, and their experience has not been a plus. No, like like dude, like they 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 bring out all these frustrations about their current situation, and then the earnings also have been a plus because recruited earnings aren't what they thought it was going to be. They're not selling as much as they want or as much as our guys are. But then I'm seeing like as they're trying to leave or make a decision, dude, they're getting like guilt tripped by the by the owner, guilt tripped by the manager. Did you owe me this? Did you owe me another chance? You and like, dude, I don't. Like my people don't owe me anything. Like they they, yeah. they don't, right? Like just it's the Tim Grover quote, like life owes you nothing. Like you have to go out and you have to earn it. And so, yeah, no, people won't like you can't build if you don't retain and and you won't retain if you can't deliver that type of earning, like A plus earnings and A plus experiences. Uh like that's why people switch occupations. That's why they switch jobs. That's why they switch careers, is because they can either have a better experience through mentorship, culture, leadership, you know, personal development, spiritual growth, whatever it is, or they're getting a raise somewhere else, right? They're going to get paid more somewhere else. Absolutely. 
Um, one thing I want to uh, touch on now is, um, you know, because clearly, like, you've always been setting high standards for yourself and for your organization. What's kept you raising those standards continually? Um, well, I just like, I, like if you, you know, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Right. And so like, if, you know, if you understand your potential, like there is very little laziness that goes on within our, within our company because of the intention. Um, but I don't know, dude, like, I, I mean, you'd have to ask the in, entire company. It's not just a, just a me thing, but yeah. at this point, like they're raising the bar, like, and they're doing it and they're, you know, yeah. they're doing what I did was doing in 2020, 2021. And at that point I was doing what John was doing two, three years before that. It's like, they've definitely carried the torch and they're doing it way better than we did a few years ago yeah and so it, it's cool dude it like proximity really just is power like people throw that around but it's no to show me your friends i'll show you your future you become the average of the five people you're around the most and uh yeah when everyone else is raising the bar literally every single day like it just you're yeah. like shoot dude i gotta get going like i gotta <laughs> get going i gotta do more right and it's it's that healthy pressure to go out and and just be the best version of yourself but yeah, no, like that, that's what greatness is, right? Is closing that gap in between what you're doing and what your potential is and, and being around the right people totally helps you close that gap. It, it at least encourages you. Yeah, totally. Cause I, I think, you know, a lot of people probably look at your story and they're just like, oh, he's just like a genetic anomaly. Like he has the secret pitch. Like yeah, I sure about. wish, man. That'd be, that'd be a chill <laughs> life if it was just that easy. Right. But it's like, you do look you know, at, at the building blocks and like, you know, one, obviously intention's huge, but then you have guys in your corner, like Cody Olive, like John Taylor, yeah. uh, Jackson Jr. Guys who like, you know, I think were building blocks and in, in pushing you to raise those standards for sure. Like, you know, if Cody wasn't there that be, summer. Yeah, there would be no me. Yeah, no, I, I uh, no, dude, I, I really did just get so lucky with plugging in with the people that I'm, that I now am, you know, able to be call my partners, like, I just know that they care about me. Like I know that they want to like, you know, they want me to level up. They want me to grow as a human. Like I would be nowhere without those guys. I would be nowhere. Yeah. So big shout outs to all of them. Shout outs to all of them. Shout outs to all of them. So even John. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we <laughs> even, love you, John. Even John. Enjoy Hawaii, John. Enjoy Hawaii. We're get, we're getting him on the podcast here in a couple of weeks, and that's one I'm very much looking forward to. He's gonna be sick. But, yeah. Um now kind of talk to me about um you know, we've been talking about leadership and the, and the essence of leadership uh, to you, obviously, you know, as we've been saying is intention, but it's also like caring for your guys. How yeah. do you develop that level of like, I, I almost want to say just like brotherly love and care for your guys. Yeah. Um, I think that like when guys come and sit down, right? Like it's the same way that John and Easton start those meetings with our operating partners. It's like, okay, does this work? Like, it, it, like, cause I'm not above telling people that like the grit isn't the best option for them if it's not. Yeah. Like if it's not, then like that means it's not and you want different things than what we want. And dude, that is so okay. Like that's super okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that like when people come and meet, they I think that the number one piece of feedback that I that we get uh when guys come and meet from other companies is like, Oh, dude, you guys are like actually normal. Like you guys are actually yeah. relatable. <laughs> <laughs> like you guys are actually relatable, like you're normal, yes. like you act like it actually feels like you're authentic, like it actually feels like you care. Uh, the way that you talk about your guys, like it, it, it's different than how other recruiters. And so that's like usually my hope when guys come and take meetings is like, yeah, dude, the number one hope is, is not that we get the rep. Like the number one hope that is that when you come and meet with us, like you, you feel that it's different. It sounds different. It looks different. It feels different mm -hmm. as far as like our pitch on what it is, it, what it is like to come and work with us. Um, but no, dude, like we, we don't, you know, we don't tolerate the BS. Like we don't tolerate the, the toxicity. We don't tolerate the you know, the greediness that, that you find so, so much in door to door and in mm -hmm. summer sales, like we don't, we don't tolerate it. And so, uh, it's like, dude, it's not hard to love Zach Seeger. It's <laughs> like, so it's not like, it's not hard to love Cody Olive. Like, like so dude, those true. guys are like, how could I ever have been more blessed and more grateful to have been able to work with such good humans? Like, it's like, I, I'm the one that's like, and so no, there's no like how to like love your guys more. Like, I, I don't have advice for that because it's it's not like it's the easiest thing in the world to work with the guys that I do. It's so true. Yeah, you can't not love that. No, what are we talking about? That guy. <laughs> you can't not. You can't. Zach Kinzel. You can't, you can't Zach not Kinzel. love that guy. Alec Brock Weather. Reeve. Oh my gosh. Like Nate Holly, all these like, guys. Yeah, you can't not love those guys. All there. studs. And they're all guys that are in your corner. Like any of them be willing to do anything for anyone. Yeah, I think it's, it's cool also that, you know, back at Green X, I was one of the fewer 
people that wasn't born into the fold where we're, we have more and more people switching from other companies after working, yeah. you know, at other places for multiple years. And it's cool that we've come from all different walks of life because a lot of the times, like how I've always kind of taken it is, is dude, I, I've, I've been there and I've done that and I've, I've learned how not to do things. Yeah. And that's how a lot of our guys kind of have operated is like, okay, we've been at other companies and like, we know how not to treat reps. We know how not to talk to them. We know how not to put pressure on them. We, we know what not to do. Mm -hmm. And so like, we're not going to be perfect, but like, if we can just avoid, you know, the toxicity or if we can avoid, you know, being bad leaders that more whip from the back versus lead from the front, then, you know, at least we have better odds. We still might mess yeah. up, but like, at least like if we can avoid doing things the wrong way, then, then that's a good track to start on. Absolutely. So speaking to kind of some of those mistakes and challenges, what are some of the biggest challenges that you as a leader in creating that culture? Yeah, I think, uh, so like for like as far as track record goes right like in 2020 cody and i were the only ones that have sold over over 550 or even over 500 uh that summer and then it moved to 11 just because more leaders like bought into the idea that was our first year in business and it's like let's go be alabama of pest control like yeah. let's go do that and and everyone saddled up and went out and executed and then i went to 14 and then to 37. i really think that um the the reason for that big jump and it was like it was eight returning golden doors to 37 and that was with us doing now we're doing spring block summer block and fall block and 10 day on 20 day off and year round stuff and so yeah i think that you'll just start to see our reps sell way more per rep but i think that the big reason we went from having eight returning golden doors to 37 last year i think that before um we had so we have our conference twice a year it's called our grit progress series uh and last year calvin did this training and i don't know if you've heard people talk about it it's like it it's still like our, one of our best trains we've ever done, if not the best. Mm -hmm. And it was all about like, you know, we do the work and we like, we put in the work when we're out in market, that's our A, right? A plus B equals C. B is like, you know, the shit or the ish that you like yeah. face. Like it's all the things. And those are like disguised demons, very apparent demons. Like, you know, it's the girlfriend comes out and visits you. And then like, all of a sudden you're not knocking hard on Saturday and then it bleeds into Monday cause you got to take her to the airport. Well now like, that just took away two days of of you producing and so like that can look in all different shapes and sizes as far as like b goes like the ish that you're gonna face that's gonna equate to c right like the results and so a lot of times we go out there and we do all the work we put in the we put in the prep but then like we let the shit get in the way and that those two things mix, mix each other up and then it's like oh well okay i ended up with c like and that's just how my summer went because of x y and z and this went wrong and that went wrong and there's COVID and there's riots and all this other stuff and what calvin's message was was like dude like the goal and like the outcome has to be the top priority like you can't keep looking for ways to go around b or to go around the ish or over it or avoid it like dude you have to go through it yeah like it has to be a part of the equation right and so i think that after that training he had me cody and uh seager come up we were the four million dollar reps that summer um and it was like a q a thing and that was like really i think the first time that we as a company like really like actually got vulnerable yeah. Uh, and it was like, I walked through, I walked guys through like at all the personal challenges. It got, it even got private, like of things that I've faced on like a, a an emotional and a, a mental stress level that over the last five years of knocking. And it's like, no dude, like if you think I don't face the same BS that you face, like you are just dead wrong. Yeah. It might even be worse. Right. But, but like the difference is like, I don't validate it. And so I think guys understanding that like, you don't have to be this freak and you don't have to be this perfect person you don't have to be cody oliver john you don't have to be john taylor like dude you can have weaknesses like that is okay i think that's yeah. a big difference between you know i love both of them david goggins is awesome the iron cowboy is awesome we have a good relationship with with james lawrence the iron cowboy but they're totally different philosophies like totally. you know like one of them is like no dude f the world like you know be harder go through like don't stop caring like push your emotions down where the iron cowboy and james is way more like dude no i identify him like sit down with them, right? Like yeah. it was cool. Brad Reedy, he's world known psychiatrist. He's actually Jake Reedy. He's our director of marketing. Um, it's actually his dad. Uh, mm. He has a podcast, has written, written books. A lot of people that go to school to study. Fellow you know. holy grad, Jake Reedy. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. What a guy. What a guy. Shout out to him. But no, like J Brad Reedy came and spoke and he was like at our, at our, at one of our GPSs. I think he's spoken in the last two because he's so awesome. But, uh, he was like, no, instead of like wanting to fight your demons or punch them in the face, which is like, you know, the expression that most young kids make, he's like, yeah. dude, sit down with them, have a drink with them. Like, yeah, understand, like get to know where like the yeah. demons or the insecurities are coming from. 
so that you can like confidently, you know, beat them. You can confidently work through like your own stuff and your own ish. And so I think that like that was like a really big change that we made last year uh, is that like you don't have to be the hardest person ever. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have a steel trap of a brain, but like, no, dude, like it's okay to have struggles. Like it's yeah. okay to have rough days. What you do with them and what the aftermath looks like though, that's what's gonna dictate what your results look like. Not if you have struggles or not, because if you're just like, dude, how do I just not have struggles? Like you're just looking at it wrong. Like that's yeah. A plus B equals C where, no dude, it's C equals B plus A. Yeah. Right, like B is a part of that. Like the demons are a part of that. The problems are a part of that. The All the things that we as reps emotionally get wrapped up into is part of it. And so if you don't know how to cope with those, then yeah, dude, that's where you run into like the really hard days and the hard summers and it you know you go through quote unquote a rut i don't think you really go through a rut in selling i think it's just all in between your ears because not your technique is like crazy you know crazy off yeah. but it totally is like how you're talking to yourself and so three feet yeah in, three feet out <laughs> yeah there's only so many ways to explain how to sell pass control only so many ways there's only so many ways uh but no i think that like making that adjustment of like it doesn't have to look be or sound one way like everyone is on their own journey yeah. and you need to get way more familiar with who you are as a human and what you need, then you can actually go out and, 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 you know, capture C, you can actually go out and capture the goals. Yeah. Which is wild to think about because so many people focus so much on, oh, well, I, I got to fix this problem. I got to heal this trauma. Oh, I dude, gotta... I have this issue, dude. Yeah. I, I can't do this. Or dude, my problem is this. It's like, no, dude, like stop viewing it from such a negative light Yeah. and like get more familiar from it with it. Like, where does that come from? Like, why is that stemming? Like, then you have ways to again, go about and, and, and take care of those problems versus just being frustrated and beating yourself over the head over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Cause then you know how to actually, cause, cause the demons are never going to go away. Never. Ever. But if you know how they work and what makes them tick, then you know how to control that. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm big on the whole, like, did I deal with thing, you know, on a personal level, I, I definitely deal with anxiety, depression, like it gets pretty high and low at times. And yeah. that was one of the things I opened up to the company about that they had no, they had like, no one really had any idea of that a year ago. Uh, but it's like, no, dude, I go to therapy weekly. Like I do that. Like I, I, I work on myself. I do my own work. And so, yeah, to say like, if I were to be able to go and run it back and do the whole running a team and selling at an elite level, like, oh, dude, I would be, I would be at the top of my game because I'm way more familiar with who I am as a human versus, you know, when I was in the thick of it and just beating yeah. myself over the head about all of my problems and, you know, imperfections where now the more familiar you can get with yourself and be, you know, and learn how to love yourself and what you need, it's going to be way easier to, you know, it's a, taking a step backwards to take a hundred steps forward. Yeah. So hundred percent, which gosh, this is probably one of the most like powerful life <laughs> lessons. I think anyone could really learn. Yeah, dude, that's what, well, that's what life is. Because it's restructuring your priorities and restructuring again, your intention. Totally. Yeah. And the more that we can help our reps do that, like that's why you're seeing the fruits. Like that's why guys are seeing like our guys do so well is because they're not just growing, you know, sales wise or money wise. Like, no, dude, they're like leveling up as humans. Yeah. Like that's so why good. it was like, be in so insane. Good. but it's the same stuff that, you know, Casey and all these OG Jeff and all these guys from Vivint, the OG guys in the space talk about, but no one really like actually, you know, focuses fully on that. Yeah. Because I think so many people are so results based. hundred percent. Yeah. And I think that was like the struggle that we faced like the first couple of years. And I think we've made that pivot. Uh, and uh, that I think that's been a huge lesson that we've learned as leaders. Yeah. So. And, and and it's hard, especially I imagine like at a company like yours, where there's so many golden door winners. So much pressure. Yeah. So much pressure. And I imagine, you know, you guys had 37 golden door winners. I bet a lot more people had the goal to be a golden door winner too. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Which is impressive that 37 were able to squeeze through that. No, dude, those guys are my heroes, bro. They, like, it's insane, <laughs> sure. dude. Carson Blazer got done with his million dollar summer on Halloween. Zach Rose got done with his what golden a, what door. A guy. Dude, Carson's nuts, nuts because he like broke an arm that one he's year. He's insane. Dude. Like, no, he's insane. Like, yeah. The man no. doesn't feel pain, or at least he knows how to like no feeling work there. through it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, those. Boy still needs to text me back, Carson. He'll get up here. You dick. No, he, he's here. come up here, but like, yeah. You got to text me back. Text, okay. text Roz back. Text but no, dude, they're, uh, yeah, those, like, Zach Rose finished his Golden Door on November 11th, right? Yeah. Like, it's insane. But, like, again, I think it's guys are getting way more familiar with, like, what they need. Yeah. And that their journey is not going to look like mine or John's or Seeger's or Corbin's. Like, and Corbin's isn't going to look like Seeger's. And everyone's just going to be different. And that's yeah. great. Which is crazy because literally it's like, yeah, I, you guys are all very different. Like, I remember I had, like, we did a, a double Golden Door special with 
Oh, cool. Siegs, Brock, and uh, Corbin all come in here, and it's crazy to see how different they Super. all are. Super, yeah, those guys are different. Yeah, <laughs> but but it was cool because it's like they still have like really good like energy and dynamic together, but they're all like, my gosh, especially like talking to Corbin is like, this is just a kid, but yeah. he's like confident as hell. It's insane. And, like you know what I mean. But it, and then you talk to Seeger, and it's like, damn, this guy's like, you know, Iron Cowboy level mentality. And then you talk to Brock, and he's just like this down to earth dude yep. and i don't know it's just really cool how how different everyone is but yeah. um Dif different but again there's there's that alignment yeah right there's that alignment and core same values foundation. And yeah dude they care about the same things like you know very similar ones yeah which is awesome and then you know having those people that uh share the same values and able to grow together yeah it's awesome. cool it's cool man yeah so now kind of diving into like you know because i think you've probably been asked this more than anyone like how do you sell at an elite level because especially like you know you kind of went out and did things that had never been done before and sold more than anyone else had ever sold before what's really like the key to learning how to sell really big days um well i certainly believe right like i believe that you know you can do anything that you put your mind to uh i also believe at the same time like your environment creates your mindset uh and so number one right it's like it, like if you feel like you're being put in a box or if you put yourself in a box, like evaluate like what that box is and like who put you in it. Like I was talking to, you know, someone that I'm way close with that worked at a different company um, in in the past. And it's like, dude, like, like the only reason you think that this is like what you are capable of is because of the box that those guys put you in that you were working with. It's like, dude, F that box. Like, <laughs> like get rid of the box, create your own box, create your own, like create your own person, right? Like if you can go out and do five a day you five in a day you can go out and do five every single day right if you can do 10 in a day you can go out and do 10 every single day and and so i think i think it's it's two things right it's like it's one it's having that mindset it's it's capturing that it's you know it's growing into that that you could actually totally do anything that you put your mind to um but at the same time your environment will create your mindset and then after that right it's like once the goal is set i think that something that reps struggle with a lot. Like I think that over this last summer, I got to travel way more, talk with way more reps just because I wasn't tied down to one team. And, and and it was it was awesome to be able to interact with so many, so many guys in the company last year. But the constant thread that I saw with guys who weren't quote unquote pacing to do what they wanted to do. Uh, I think that they really, I think that where I've been different is um, I've always tried to like, you know, grab onto perspective and optimism like those two things i think are the things that reps struggle with the very most in door to door yeah uh, is perspective that like you will get better like if you're not if you're at zero by eight like you will find three deals after eight you will find two deals after eight you will find a deal after nine you will find a deal after 9 30. you're if you're not at where you want to be on the week well friday and saturday you will double your week you will yeah. double your week if friday is not what you want like saturday will pull you back up next week will save your your week from this week not being what you wanted it to be next month will be better than this month august will be better than june like and so, yeah, it's perspective. And then it's it's being optimistic that, no, dude, you were like, you were about to find your stride. You were about to hit your stride. And then it's- Yeah, you're three feet from gold. You're right there. Like, you're right there. Like, when I'm on the doors, dude, like, what you say to yourself totally matters. Uh, the person that your words matter to the most is is you, right? And so, uh, yeah, I think it's those two things, perspective and it's optimism. I don't think it's as much of, you know, pitch-wise or skill set-wise. Like, I think there are far more people that- are in the space that are way more gifted and talented than three I am. Three feet up, three feet out. But there's yeah, the talent <laughs> just doesn't pay like it doesn't, right? Like it's 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 putting your head down and, and and keeping the perspective and taking a step back when you need to, so you can take steps forward. And then uh, it's staying optimistic all the time, you know. And that's the hardest part of doing this job is staying stoked when you know things are not <laughs> telling you that you way. should be stoked. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, it's, I say it's those two things. It's 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 rallying when you have to, but you're doing that because you have perspective and your, your, your optimism is very high. Yeah. But what a powerful perspective shift because, uh, I don't, you know, I don't know if you were ever were there, but I remember being a rookie and being like, Oh, it's eight o'clock. I don't have anything. It's I, one of those days. I bagel, Chalk it up. I bageled today. Yep. I'm going to keep going, but I bageled today. Yep. And then lo and behold, that's what manifested. Yep. Or it was like, you know, not very many deals by Wednesday. Oh, it really wasn't a, a big week this week. Yeah. Cause I didn't start off hot. Yeah, it's just like, dude, like you can't stop before the final buzzer, right? Like, you, like it is, it is full gas all the way till the end, and then, then, right? Like at that point, like the reps that actually do that, and actually understand it, and and have perspective, dude, they get home, and at the end of the day, it's like, 
yeah, dude, it just doesn't like it just doesn't matter what the leaderboard says because you can actually look at your face, like your look yourself in the face in the mirror and say, no, dude, I did everything, not just physically, right? Yeah. Like like the imp when we say like focus on the inputs, forget about the outputs. Like that's not just knocking doors. Like that's easy. The 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 hardest part of the quote unquote inputs, dude, that 90, 95 percent of it is the way that you talk to yourself. And so it's like it, it's staying stoked all the way to the end and staying like full of belief that you will find a deal. You will find a deal. And that's just yeah. where most guys, yeah, dude, they check themselves out an hour, hour and a half before uh before I do. Yeah. You know, like I dude, I haven't I haven't in those last three summers of knocking working with the grid guys, dude, I didn't go back to my car before nine thirty one time. Like not even not once the whole summer. Dang. Monday through Saturday. Just cause like I knew I was going to collect all my dues at the end of the night. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Uh, and if I did, awesome. If I didn't, I will the next day. I will the next day. Yeah, because I've heard Seeger talk about. It. He's like, yeah, one day I went out and I sold one. Oh, dude, Corbin has <laughs> Corbin's had two one days on the spring block already. Yeah, and he'll go out and he'll be yeah, dude, he'll be like one of the top top reps in in the entire industry and probably break Seeger's record. And mm -hmm. he had two one days to start yeah. the year. Like he had two one days. It's like, but that's the thing. And it's he, like I get on the phone with him, and this is where he's different than how he was last year because he's growing, he's developing, he's maturing. He's like, yeah, dude, I'm I'm good though. Yeah. Like tomorrow's I'm due. I'm, tomorrow's I'm due. Tomorrow I'm due. Yeah, because Seeg's went out next day, sold twenty. Yeah, something like that. I don't know, but it's that, and that's where, dude. Like the guys that I work when I say like, dude, the guys I work with are my heroes. Like, dude, like hearing Corbin say that, like, dude, that's my, you know, I'd like to call him my offspring. He's my little brother, but it's like <laughs> he's your it's child, like, dude. Like that, like dude, that is, like he is my hero. Like, like what eighteen year old kid says that after getting kicked in the teeth for nine hours after being on a pedestal because he's the best. And the youngest door knocker to ever do it it's like no dude he's so humble like he's so humble and yeah. he, he has so much perspective i didn't when i was 18 like no, who I, did? no one did dude that's why he's he's gonna do amazing things but it's not a talent thing dude it's a it, it, it's it's him understanding him yeah right like he understands that like he's going to get better he's it's gonna it's gonna pay off and so yeah dude the guys like those guys are yeah i look up to him a, a ton absolutely what are some other like tips and hacks you have for creating that unbreakable mindset? Mm, as far as like, t I think that like everyone is different, right? Like people will, will ask on like the whole like anxiety note or depression note, like in the summer, I think the guys start to use that as a crutch. I don't mm -hmm. think that that's like a hindrance for production, right? Like I think that you can go out and you can do it throughout whatever mental battle that you're going through. And so to say that, oh dude, it's one of those days I'm dealing with anxiety, like that's BS. Like, yeah. Like that, like that's like, that can't start to be your out just cause we're talking about anxiety more. Um, but like guys will ask like, how do I deal with it? And that's where it's just really tough. Like everyone is just different. Like yeah. everyone is so different how they, like how they want to filter their thoughts or how they want to like think it's, everyone is, is super different. But I think it's just, you find what works for you. Like, mm -hmm. you know, for Nate Hawley, it's typing a million notes in his, in his iPad of like, I'm the best, I'm the dog, I'm a dog. Like I'm going to collect, I'm due, I'm due. Like, and he's doing self affirmations in his notes. Yeah. Seeger's got his own, you his know, mixtape. <laughs> Eminem mixtape that he's taped that he's talking to himself over and over again. Like, you know, Corbin writes in his journal. Like I talk to myself on the doors, like it, it, everyone is just different. And so I think like you need to discover that for you of like, okay, how can I like create that? But again, first thing you got to look at is like, okay, well, who are you, who are you around? Are you around other people that have like that type of mindset? Like, I know that if I played basketball in the nineties and like I was on the bulls, then like, I'm way more likely to be able to to capture that mindset as well versus, you know, playing on a team that everyone is just feeling sorry for themselves all the time. Yeah, it's 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 nearly impossible to do it in that environment. Totally, totally. And it's interesting because it's so true where like everyone kind of has their own niche. Yeah. Of how they create their own mindset. Like lately, I've been doing a bunch of cold plunges, right? Yeah. And then I kind of realized I'm like, I love the cold plunge. But that's the problem is I actually like it. Yeah. So, so I'm now like, I'm like, is like, that actually hardening you? you I'm know? like, I'm not pushing myself because I like doing it. Yeah. I, I get it. I don't, I'm not sitting at the edge of the water. Like, all right, like I got to challenge myself. And then I realized I'm like, what's the hard part in it? I'm like, oh, well, like I hate dunk dunking my head in it. So yeah. I got to focus on something like that. Yeah. What else do I hate doing? What do I not what's like doing? What's really going to like push me? I'm like, I hate running but I'll do it because I hate it. And that's the point. <laughs> yeah, I've always done like a 30 day challenge, like right before I go out, like some type of like 75 hard if I'm going out like straight to market. Uh, and I, again, I think everyone's different, right? Like everyone's different. If you talk to Seeger, it's like back in the day before he did a thousand, he did the four by four by 48 with Preston Strickland and John 
yeah. John Taylor and like and he also ran a marathon. You asked Brock if he did that, and he's like, "No, I don't need to do that. Like, that's not gonna make me sell more <laughs> pest control." Yeah, uh, it's interesting. So, yeah, guys, like you know, some guys train the whole off season. Yeah, some guys just go in cold. Some guys know exactly what they need to do, and they go out and they and they do it. And so, yeah, dude, you just you got to figure out what's best for you. I've I've been of the opinion, right? Like with those thirty day, like if you're gonna do something, I think that that totally helps get you in like selling shape and selling like mm -hmm. selling mode and mindset. It's like gallon of water a day cardio yeah. every day because i hate cardio book a week like i've also been of the opinion that like i'm not above stuff and so yeah. like, no, it's not gonna hurt it's only gonna help me fill the cookie jar more and more and absolutely and make the summer more valuable but again everyone is just is just different yeah absolutely because you know back to kind of like my cold plunges thing it's like yeah i like it but if i can look back and be like i still did it every day yeah then i, I have that in the cookie jar 100 percent, yeah which is important yep um now this is gonna be this is gonna be nice and spicy for all you grit boys listening. <laughs> we got our top tens predictions oh, for this year. Roz wants to stir the pot. I want to stir the freaking pot because <laughs> yeah, it was funny. I'm like texting Siegs the other day. I'm like, dude, like I'm working on this top ten. Like last two hours of my job, I'm just like writing a top ten for your guys. Yeah, company. I don't yeah. even work for you guys. But uh, let me drop in first. Okay. All right, guys. So listen up. We got, oh, it's going to be spicy this year. It's funny too, because I'm like, I'm pretty sure you'll have a guy from another company that's joining in that probably is going to hit one probably. of those top 10 spots. Probably. So I don't even know. Whoever whoever you may be, the chosen one. Uh, we do have that big fish uh, incentive. I don't know if you saw that. It's a big fish incentive. Yeah, 50K. Top you're not, you're over. not messing around. No. no. You're playing, playing full out. No. So, <laughs> all right. Listen up, boys and girls. And this is this is a hot take here. Number one, Zach Seeger. He's coming away. I think he's one point at least 1.5 mil again. Number two, big Corbin. Big Corbin. Big Corbin. I don't know. Corbin might do two mil though. He I don't know what he's gonna do. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you. Well, Corbin, whatever Corbin's whatever not... him, whatever him, Cody, Seeger, Brock say they're gonna do, I'm like, yeah, sound yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, put put the house on it. <laughs> like, yeah, there. Uh, yeah, we'll see. So double golden door from them. Zach Kinzel, double golden door. Yep, I'm on that way. Number three spot. Carson Blazard, the the, uh, the Iron Man himself, double golden door. And then now I'm gonna go into. Oh, I got one more double golden door because I'm okay. I'm changing Cody's from, from okay. double to a mill. Okay. Chuck Mills, double golden door. Dog. Number five spot, Chuck Mills. <laughs> then I'm gonna throw Cody all in, in the Millie. Alec Withers, Millie Group. Nate Hawley, Caleb Grindel, Adam Clark, and whoever may be the chosen one. So you, that was nine. Yeah, then, then, okay, uh, then you think we'll have a switch over beat. We'll have a switch in, over hit, hit talks. Okay, cool. Who hits Mill? Um, you want me to go through mine? Let's go through yours. Oh, what a blessing. <laughs> Uh, okay, so our top 10, um, what I've got for this, and just like, just to preface, right? Like, I think that this year's different. Like, it's just, it, it's uh, with us doing like the spring block, the fall block, the summer yeah. block, like Brock Greaves having a baby here soon. Jacob Shear's having a baby soon. Like, yeah. there, I think that our company will start to like look different as far as like when guys knock and, and this, that, and the other. But um, at one, and, and then also like with, with with this, I think it's just, a lot of it's contingent upon like what they want to do and like yeah. what their plans are with like running teams, getting back to recruit a program and not doing the fall block or the spring block. So who knows? I uh, So if, if Seager was just a rep, then yeah, Seager would be right up there with Corbin, but I got Corbin at one. I think that he'll, I mean, he's already knocking longer. He's doing our spring block right now. He's, he'll, he'll eclipse hundred K in the next few days. Um, so I got Corbin at one. Hopefully he lets, you know, See, Seager doesn't give him too much of a of a push, but they're going to be in the same office together this year. Yeah, they're and running out, and that could get Portland. aggressive. But yeah, I think Corbin he he definitely has plans to knock longer than Seager. Uh, so I got Seager at two. Um, I got Kinsel at three as well. I got Carson Blazard at four, and then at five I got Hudson Ashcraft. Ooh, sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Hudson's a good, da good guy. Good Just south of 800k last year. Went from like 160 the year before. Mm. It was insane. Yeah, he's a dog. He's a dog. He's also doing our spring block. At six, I got Charles Mills. Uh, at seven, I got Nate Hawley. At eight, I got Adam Clark. Also a good one. At nine, I got Cody. And then at 10, I got Bo Barbin. Ooh. Yeah. That's a new one. It's a new one. It's... Don't sleep, man. Don't <laughs> sleep. 
I won't, Bo- I won't. Boated, boated 400K last year. Oh, uh, he's got it this year, then. He, uh, he's doing our spring rock right now. He'll also eclipse 100K in a few days. He's, uh, he's, 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 he's going fast. So I think that all 10 of these guys will do over a mil. I think six or seven of them will do a double. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. We'll it's, see what happens. It's a, it's a spicy year. It is. It's cool. I think that there's only been two outside of our company that have done a mill. So hopefully we get to see that from other companies this year too. Yeah, it's gonna be nuts. How many guys do you think do Golden Door total in your org? In our in our whole company? Yeah. I think it. Uh, I'm I'm willing to say it'll be north of sixty. That'll be nuts. It will be nuts. You're gonna have to get a bigger stage. Gonna have to get a bigger stage. <laughs> <laughs> and then more people are gonna be throwing rocks at us. Me like you guys are blah, blah, blah. The grit the grit show, right, Roz? <laughs> the grit show. <laughs> retention. <laughs> Which guys, that is a part of our thing now. You have to show five hundred K retained. Yep. So double for double golden doors they'll have to they'll have to retain uh one point one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 Stoked. So. So, but, or no, it's 500 retained. So yeah, yeah. They'll so have to retain a mill. mill. Yep. Mill retain. Cool. Which, I mean, shouldn't be too bad. Can't wait to see. <laughs> we'll check the receipts, right? We'll check the receipts. We'll check the receipts. Keep we, them coming. We did. Uh, uh, Braden and I went down to Great HQ the other day. John Taylor showed his naked body. That's how we do it, man. You know, we get vulnerable. We, 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 saw, we, we open the books. We saw every orifice. Uh, yeah, we definitely saw the uh, like the pay stubs, the back end checks, the numbers, and uh, legitimized those. Which it was pretty nuts to see that. I'm like, oh damn! Like we should start doing that with yeah. more companies. They're actually making some money. Yeah, <laughs> like, like they didn't just blow it on this building. Like, no, they pay their guys too. So. They do. Our guys do okay. Our guys do okay. Yeah, love it. So, yep, top 10 boys. Love you guys. You guys are all a uh, bunch, of, bunch of stone cold killers. So it's going to be fun to see, like, you know, especially with all, like, the, the spring block, fall block, summer block, which, which is, that's a unique approach, too. Yeah, so we started. Let's jam on that real quick. Yep, we did our, uh, we did, we're doing our pilot block right now. It's six weeks. Eventually, like, next year, our, our spring block will be nine weeks. Our fall, our summer block will be you know, a normal 16 weeks, but that's starting like May 1. We'll have guys going out as early as, as April 1, like normal for the, yeah. for the spring block or for the summer block. Uh, and then fall block will be nine weeks. Um, we also started our 10 day on 20 day off uh, the first 10 days of February. So we have our second 10 day blitz coming up here in the next week. Um, and then we also have guys doing, you know, all year long in like Florida and Texas. And I think that'll start to become a lot more prevalent as well. Which is interesting because, you know, it's, it's kind of taking that like, you know, you see you see a lot of that in alarms. You see that in solar and yeah. stuff like that, like different types of programs, not just summer. So yeah, and most of most of like honestly, most of the industry at this point isn't in school. Uh, at least yeah. you know, a lot of our reps are either on a break or or, or aren't. Um, our biggest thing is like we don't want to just be like a just a one you know just one a one track one track. Yeah, like yeah. It, it, we want to be a universal option, and however guys want to do it, we're we're down to help them do it that way. Which is cool, but there are no bugs in the winter. There are bugs. <laughs> there are bugs. There are bugs. <laughs> it's preventative, dude. Yeah, there's take a lot less. Pro- but are you proactive or reactive? Or proactive. Over we here. take care of this before it happens. Always, dude. I could slam heads. You really could. I could. We'll have to get you out there with with uh, Corbin and Seeger in Portland. Woo, that'd be a fun time. That'd be a hell of a car group. That would. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be crazy. Crazy car group right there. Yeah, I might have to join in for that day. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, dude, thanks for hopping on. What what, what kind of like parting words of wisdom do you have for the industry? Um, not tons, right? Like I, I, I love like how the industry is like leveling up. I think that there's t- there's more abundance in the industry than there ever has been been before. Um, I uh, yeah, I'm just excited to see see what will happen. And I'm excited for more and more people that, you know, I think this has been a crazy year for us as far as like vet recruiting goes. That's mm-hmm. been like where most of our efforts have been focused. And so I uh yeah like leaders you know reps team managers anyone it's like my plea and like urge to 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 everyone is like dude actually like if you know if you're gonna say things in recruiting meetings like go out and 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 show up and make it happen you know nothing sucks worse than watching guys you know because i've been there it's like you know a lot of people that that have come from different companies have it's like you get recruited on one thing and then you get out there and it's really not that thing right like oh you know they told me that they were gonna pour into me but again it comes back to what's the intention of the leadership well it's there's a lot of other things kind of going on and so you know, bet on, bet on, but don't bet on things. Don't bet on branches. Don't bet on, com- like, don't bet on companies. Don't bet on industries, pests versus solar versus, versus alarms. Like, dude, bet on people, uh, like bet on people. I know that if pest control disappeared tomorrow, then we would go out and we would do even more incredible. Like we would, we would do, we would do incredible things regardless of what we were selling. So yeah, 
it's a uh, yeah dude people over everything and, and that's going to help get you to where you want to go yeah if you're not in the bug juice business you're in the people business sure are people over everything i love it well dude what a great way to end it so guys keep tuning in i hope you guys took some massive notes keep tuning in every week we're going to try to drop these golden door deep dives we're gonna have some fire guests you know some of the the brains behind the brains more ogs more ogs uh parker anderton's gonna be coming in here and john taylor so it's gonna be nuts to you know kind of uh you know dive in deep and yeah abundance mentality like learn from as many people as you can that have done what you want to go do so thanks again for tuning in we'll catch you guys next time